Hi, I'm Jeff Ludy, the owner of Houston Window Experts. Thank you for watching this video today. I'm standing in our beautiful 19,000 square foot distribution center. Our showroom's about a mile, half mile that way. This is our distribution center where we have windows and doors that have already been ordered for our clients and are ready to go out and to be installed. And oh my gosh, I'm telling you, we have just really been blessed. We have such great, wonderful clients and we're so glad to be providing our service, not just to Houston, but information and power to people all across the country and all across the world that watch these videos. We had no idea when we started this YouTube channel that people all around the country and all around the world would be watching, but thank you for watching. Don't forget to subscribe if you like the content and what we have to say. Now, if you live outside of this area and you're looking for a great window company in your area, we've actually been beginning to compile a list because we talk to great window companies all over the country and people ask all the time, do you know somebody in my area? So there's some information how you can find out more about a great window dealer in your area if that's what you're interested in and that'll be down below in the description. So today we're going to do a little bit of an experiment and I want to tell you right up front, uh, in fact, I want, you to, I want you to meet Jason. Jason, are you, uh, are you a scientist? No. Okay, no. are you a chemical engineer? <laughs> Not by a long shot. Or a structural engineer? No, sir. Okay, but you have great structure, you have great form, <laughs> you seem like a strong guy, a CrossFit, a CrossFit yeah. guy. Right. Um, yes, so he's going to be my helper today. But see, I'm not a scientist. I'm not wearing a lab coat, even though wearing a lab coat would make me look more important and more trustworthy. Uh, we're just a couple of guys that sell and install windows. And we thought, let's do a little non-scientific experiment before I get a bunch of hate mail. This is non-scientific. We're not claiming that we know what we're doing. It's for entertainment purposes only. So you do your own research, make your own decisions. But today we want to compare two products. One, the Pella fiberglass, they call it Impervia, and the other is the Anderson Fibrex. Now people ask me all the time, Jeff, what's better, Anderson Fibrex or Pella Impervia? We get that question an awful lot. They're both great products. In fact, we sell both yeah. products. We love both products. One appeals to one group, and the other appeals to a different group of people. I think if you bought either one of these products, you'd find yourself very happy both are reputable companies offering great warranties, great customer service, and they've been around for close to, if not over, 100 years. So the Pella Impervia is a fiberglass product. It's called Pultruded. We have a video about Pultrusion. Pultrusion is done a little bit differently than Extrusion. Extrusion is what you normally see in vinyl and things like that, but Pultrusion is where the product's actually pulled through. It's a weaving of fabrics and fiberglass and glass cords to give it strength and structural mats. And uh, there's some B-roll, yes, I hope you enjoyed watching that. That tells you a little bit about that. We have a video just about Pultrusion, so you can understand better about Pultrusion. The Anderson product made by them is called Fibrex, not fiberglass, Fibrex. It has a similar sound to it, but it's not the same thing. Instead of it being a Pultruded product, it's actually an extruded product. And it's made from 60% of their proprietary product that they call, I don't want to get it wrong because I did it in a previous video, they call it thermoplastic polymer. If you Google the word thermoplastic polymer, you'll see that it's basically PVC. And it is 60% that and 40% wood shavings. So it's a, it's, it's a unique product. They call it a composite and it's paintable and it has some great attributes as well. And so both of these window companies claim that they're better than the other. Kind of like Ford says, I'm better than Chevy and, right. and Dodge says, no, I'm better than both of those guys. <laughs> So today we want to just show you some things that uh, we thought we would test the claims that they make. Now, you should know that we have not practiced or rehearsed this. I'm going to be as surprised as you are. I think I already can predict the outcome because some of these things yeah. we already know from reading the materials, but we have not staged this and we haven't prepared for this other than to get it ready for you to see. So here's what we want to do. We are going to use the forklift and Jason's going to get on there in just a second and raise it up. We have the two products here. Um, this is the... Fibrex product, we cut a piece of it. This is from a frame on their window. Okay, so it's from the frame. And this is the product called Impervia, made by Pella, and it also came from the frame. Now, if you notice, I wanna show you, we're trying to make this as even as possible. If you notice here, they were both virtually identical when it comes to the width, and they are almost identical when it comes to the height. It looks like the Anderson Fibrex might be just a little bit shorter, but not by much. There is one advantage I think that the Fibrex will have is if you notice here, it has this additional uh, turn on it. This is where the window uh, would slide on a single hung window that goes up and down. And of course, anytime you know, right? Anytime you have another turn or another bend, you have more material and you also have 
uh, more strength, more rigidity. Also, just looking at the thickness of the two products, you know, from my, from the naked eye, I don't have a caliper of any kind, but it looks to me like maybe the Fibrex is just slightly thicker wall material, but of course they are completely different materials. And so that's, that's kind of what we're here to, to talk about today. This is Pella Impervia's uh, brochure about their product. You know, these black windows are really popular. Anderson makes it, and so does Pella and a lot of other brands. And people love that look. Uh, thank you, Chip and Joanna, for creating that. In fact, that's kind of the look a lot of people are going for right now in their homes. So I'm looking at their, at their brochure here, and they're telling me how it's, it won't rot and it won't corrode. And that's the same thing with both products, you know, because there's, you don't have properties here that can rot. But they also really like to brag about uh, how they're, they claim, Pella claims, that they are stronger than Anderson. Let me turn to that right page for you here. They're saying that it resists dents 100 times more. In other words, it has 100 times more impact resistance than Fibrex. And on bending, it's average 10 times stronger than Fibrex in a bend test. And that it resists breaking on average 20 times uh, more because it has the 20 times the tensile strength of Fibrex. So we're gonna do just a couple of experiments and then we have a little bonus uh, at the very end. I think you're gonna like that too. And what we're going to do is we're going to, yeah, get on there, Jason. Let's get it up there and we'll show them what we're going to do. We have uh, some weight here and we're going to test one at a time. Go ahead, kick it on up about a foot. We have some weights down here. This is um, 35 pounds times two. Keep going, keep going. Uh, that's good right there. Okay, that's good. So now the weight is resting. You can shut that off if you don't mind. The weight is resting now on this strap that we put here, okay? We put the strap right in the middle. We grab the tape measure to make sure that we're dead center here, and we are. We have 20 inches in the middle, and look, we're right at the 10 inch mark right in the center there. Both of these pieces, by the way, are the same length, okay? And we're gonna make sure that they're both centered. And we also have here a six foot level, and as you can tell right now, aside from that little green strap that's kind of a little bit in the way, you can see that right now there's no deflection on this, even with uh, 70 pounds of weight. Jason, that is 70, right? Yes, sir. Plus the weight Plus of the- Plus the weight of the, the rig, probably another 10 pounds. About another 10, so we're starting at about 80 pounds. What we wanna do is we wanna start looking for deflection. So why don't you do this? Why don't you go ahead and put, uh, let's put 45 pounds on there, all right. okay? And let's see if we notice any deflection at all. Okay, I don't, I don't see anything. Put another 45 on this side if you would. So we were at 70, right? Or 80, we thought. 80. Yep. And now we put 90 more. That puts us at 170 at this point. Let's check for some deflection. I do see a little bit of deflection. You notice how we're, we're touching on the corners here on the end. And I see a little bit of light coming through there, Jason. What, do you, what does that look yep. like to you? Like sure about did. an eighth of an inch? Eighth maybe? of an inch. Okay, so let's leave this on here for just a minute. And why don't you go ahead and add, what do you have behind you? I have some 25s. Okay, put 125 on there and let's watch that. Okay, uh, I didn't seem to change much. Put another 25 on there, can you? Yep. We're gonna run out of room here, I'm wondering. <laughs> okay, so we added 50 to our 170, so we're at 220. And I'm starting to see that gap a little bit more. You see it now? Yes, sir. Okay, let's keep adding weight. I don't wanna break it, but I wanna see what we can do. We have some more 25s. So, so we're at 220, we said, right? Yep. So now we're at 2. 45, go ahead and put that on there. All right, now put another 20 on there. Didn't seem to make much of a difference. Okay. And if that thing breaks, you better make sure your toe's out of the way. Yes, no, nope. so far so good. Okay, so we're at 270. Mm -hmm. And uh, what do you got, got left? I have a 10 left. Okay, put That's it on there. Got left. Okay, we're at 280. We're getting some more deflection. Here, we've got 285. Oh, that won't fit on there, will it? No, I, let me see what I got in here. Okay, we're gonna see if we can grab any more weight. Um, we're at 280 now, and I can see some deflection. I was, I was hoping I'd be able to measure it for you, but it's not, really, it's not really measurable. I'll put it up there to see if maybe the camera can, can catch some of that, but I would say this is definitely not any more than a quarter of an inch. It's kind of hard to tell, but I don't think it's gonna be any more than a quarter of an inch of deflection there. Okay, what else you got, is that it? That's all I have, boss. Okay, that's all we've got. All right, so let's do this. Uh, we're gonna cut the camera for just a split second because we have to rig up. We're gonna take this one off. 
We'll put the other one on and we'll, and we'll repeat the same exercise. Be right back. Okay, so we took all the weight off of the Pella Impervia and we reset everything. Now we went ahead and put our Fibrex product here. Uh, we did the same thing. We centered it on here and we put it to the 10 inch mark right to the center, which is what we had on the previous one. Jason, go ahead and fire it up, please. Raise us up about six, eight inches, a little bit more. Okay, that's good, that's good, high enough. So we're starting again with the same uh, 35 on each side, which is 70, plus about another 10 pounds, we think is what this, was what this will weigh. Okay, so before we go any further, let's check um, to see what our, where we are on deflection. Okay, uh, gosh, does that have a deflection already? Sure looks like it does a little bit, okay. All right, so it could be my imagination, but it looks like there is a little bit of deflection on this already. So go ahead and uh, add 45 pounds. I do it carefully in case this thing goes. All right, there you go, you're nice and tender. We're not trying to create any friction. We're not trying to slam this down. We just want to put it under nice and gentle. And let me check before you put that on. Let's see where we are on deflection here. Yeah, I can see some deflection there. Okay, go ahead and put the next one on. Okay. Oh yeah, there's quite a bit of deflection there. Um, I would say that's already passed. Yes, sir. Yep. What we had before. So what have you added? We had we had 80. Yeah. And what did we, you add on top of that? We put 90. So we're at 170 now. 170. Okay. Do we do we are we going to go to the point of failure on this or do we? Well, let's, let's keep not? going. Let's, let's see if it, <laughs> it might make it all the way to the end. It might yeah, make it to the yeah. end. All right, go ahead and add, what are you adding now? All right, 25. Okay, 25 more pounds. Okay, put another 25 on there and then we'll look again with the level. Because okay. Pella's claiming that they have more strength against bending. Oh yeah, that looks like, let me get it up there, hold on. Yeah, that is, that is quite a gap. I'd say that's uh, close to three eighths now. Yes, sir. All right, keep going. All right. Just do it real gentle. Okay, what are you adding now? 25. 25, okay. Okay. I'll spin that around for you, do the other side. Good deal, nice and gentle. Okay, what have we got left? We had the To team. match the other comparison. We have the Okay, team. put it on a real easy now. Gentle, okay, perfect. Oh, wait, here's the first observation. Come on this side. I didn't realize that was gonna happen. See that? That yeah. edge is coming through. It's starting to bow yep, together. starting to bend together. Yeah. Okay. All right, so let's put the level back on here now. And let's see how we look for deflection. Oh my gosh, that's gotta be a half inch. Yeah, every bit. Let me, uh, you got it? You holding the yes, level? Yes, I got it. Okay. I'll do what we did with the last one. We'll put the tape measure. I'll put the, try to put the tape right there on the three inch mark. Gosh, it's hard to hold that still. Okay, look, I'm gonna put the tape on three and then you can see under the tape, what is that gonna be? At least a half inch maybe. Yeah. yeah. Three eighths, three maybe eights. three eighths. Yeah. Okay, good. Now, in all fairness, let's compare to the other side. Cause remember that one collapsed a little bit? Okay. Let's compare it to the back over here. Okay, so the back didn't take the bend. In fact, the back looks worse, doesn't it? Yeah, that actually looks like a bigger gap. I wonder if the back is taking more of the load and this is taking more of the force in that direction. Right. Uh, no myth busters, no scientists here. <laughs> we don't know, we're just, we're showing you, we're learning this for the first time. Okay, so that's the first test. I would say they both passed it from the point of view that neither one of them has failed. Right. But yeah. when, when Pella makes the claim that the fiberglass has, is better at the bend test, I would have to say that they- Most definitely. They got that right. Yeah. Do you agree? Yes, sir. Do you agree? Mention down in the comments. Get your thoughts on that. Okay, so we're gonna cut, reset, and show you the next experiment we're gonna try. Okay, so we're done over here with the bend test, and now we're gonna come over here and do a dent test or an impact test. According to um, the, the claims made by Pella, they say that it resists dents, and on average, 100 times more impact resistant than the Fibrex is. So here's how we're gonna do this little test. We're gonna start with a two and a half pound weight. We've measured from the ground up 12, 18, 24, 30, 36, 42, and 48 inches. We hope that ought to be enough. And then we're gonna start with the uh, Fibrex, excuse me, with the uh, Impervia product first. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna start at 12 inches and we'll keep working our way up and just see what kind of denting or what kind of damage this 
this uh, will do. Now, you might be saying, Jeff, why does that even matter? Why in the world would I even care about that? Well, even more so than that, probably the Ben test, this is something that may be applicable in real life. Like, if you're, if you're a construction guy and you're putting in a window and you know when you go to nail up a window, you know, we're not perfect with nails, right? You should look at a construction guy's thumb, right? Sometimes he hits his, his thumb with a hammer. And if you're putting in nails and you're doing it all day long, there's, there might be a chance that you'd slip with your hammer and you might actually hit the frame. And so what does that do to the frame of a window um, and what needs to be done about that? Another occasion would be, believe it or not, here in Houston, we don't have much hail. But even, even when we get a few little hailstorms, sometimes we have to replace windows because they get dented, right? Little dents all over them, kind of like the roof of your car would be. And so the, the better the product is designed to stand up to impact, right? To things like this, which you shouldn't happen, but maybe a baseball, if you live on a golf course, that could happen, et cetera, you, you get the picture. So we're gonna test this. Now, I want Jason to hold the back of that for me. Now, Jason, I see you are wearing those, what, what brand yeah. is that? Uh, Hex Armor. Hex, Hex armor. armor, okay, yeah. so those are, those are cut resistant gloves level six. Yep. And they also have like uh, protection on top where you can actually take an impact. So just yep. in the event, something went crazy. <laughs> uh, workman's comp people, please uh, fast forward <laughs> past this part. You don't need to be watching this. <laughs> and all of our OSHA subscribers, you can go ahead and unsubscribe at this time. Okay, so why don't you hold that for me? Okay. And I'm gonna start at 12 inches. Now we have a second camera set up down here on the ground. It's just doing a close up of that and it is, uh, slow-mo so we can kind of show that to you so here we go we're gonna start at 12 inches oh by the way i'm gonna make this drop right on the strongest part we're gonna give each product the benefit uh, that they can get this is going to be the strongest part right here of this frame so we're going to drop it right onto the strongest part ready here we go 12 inches three two one okay I don't really see anything other than a little dust. Okay, let's go to 18 inches. You ready? Three, two, one. Okay, I did see, look, it chipped a little bit of the, a little bit of the paint or something came off the corner there. This is uh, starting to delaminate a little bit. Okay, so center, you need to go that way just a little bit right there, perfect. Now we're gonna go to 24 inches. All right, now we see it started to do some damage over on that side as well. Okay, let's go to 30 inches. Oh, I even saw some dust come out of there. Did you see that? That was pretty cool. Okay, let's go to 36 inches. Ouch, that hurt my foot. I should be wearing my steel-toed boots. Okay, we see more damage. I'm gonna go to 42 inches now, you ready? Yep. Okay, that took a double hit that time. Let's go a little higher, let's go to 48 inches. Okay, now let's pull it up and take a look at it, guys. If I look at the inside of this, it actually doesn't look to me like it sustained any internal damage. It still looks pretty straight in there. Um, but if you look at it from this top point of view, you can see that some of these, some of these fibers, you know, this is probably part of that fiber that goes over the top of this protrusion. It looks like it's starting to come apart. Right here you see some deflection on that just from the impact from the top. And um, yeah, I would say that this has done a good job in my opinion of, yeah. uh, what do you think, of absorbing Two and a half times at, at 48 inches. 48. Yeah. You know what, let's go back, let's not, let's not stop. Let's uh, leave that right there. Okay. And let's go to something heavier. That was two and a half pounds. Let's see what a five pound will do. And we'll start at 36 inches, okay? okay. Are you ready? ready? Okay, here we go. Okay, let's go to 48 inches. Okay, that took a pretty good hit yeah, there. Yeah. Okay, let's look at that. Some of the same, same impact, just getting worse, but it's doing it in the same spot. So I'm really, uh, I'm really impressed with that, and it looks really good on the inside. Okay, so that was the Pella Impervia. Uh, same thing with the Fibrex. What we're gonna do, you can see this, this appears to me to be the strongest point on this frame. So we're gonna drop it onto that instead of over here, because we wanna give every product its best shot 
Um, so this right here, Jason, uh, line that up with the center. Okay. okay. And we're going to start with the two and a half pound at 12 inches like we did with the Pella product. Okay. Three, two, one. Okay. Uh oh, wait a minute. See the after bounce. Okay. Look, check this out. So the bounce didn't do hardly any damage. The after bounce popped this off on the edge. Now I can see why. See how that's like all by itself out there, just that little piece sticking out. Obviously that's not going to be nearly as strong as uh, this part of it would be as well. So we're going to, we're just going to, we're going to toss that aside and keep moving for a minute because I know it can do better than that. Okay. That was 12 inches. We'll go to 18. Ready? Here we go. Okay, I see a little bit of a dent, but it really hasn't done much to it. Okay, now we're gonna go to 24. Doing good, the after bounce got this little piece here. And we know that that's a little weaker, don't we, Jason? Okay, 30 inches. Okay, I'm starting to see some more damage there. Yep. You can tell, I see, now I see like a, looks like a hairline crack coming through there. All right, let's keep going. Was that 24? 30, that was 30. 30? Okay. That was 30, yeah. Okay, we'll go to 36. Okay, now we're really getting into true damage territory. Starting to come apart there, as you can see. And uh, on the inside, though, it still looks the same. So I'm just, it looks like it's just peeling a layer off on the outside. All right, put it right in the same spot if you could. Okay, now we're gonna go to 42 inches. Ready? Okay, we really did some damage that time. <laughs> yeah. Of course, it is repeated force, right? It's right. not just higher, it's over and but over we're, and over. you know, we keep beating up the same spot over and over. And I think that that's, that would certainly be, uh, you couldn't use that window. No, no. Okay. Let's do this in all fairness to the product because we've been hitting it here okay. over and over. I want you to turn it around and, and I don't want to hit the same spot again. All righty. Okay. Where were we at? 42? Yes. Sir. Okay. Here we go again. Okay. That did move a little bit on you, but I, I see a crack. Let's go to 48. Here we go. Okay, that time it really took that thing out of commission, didn't it? Yes, sir. Wow. Okay. All right. So let's uh, let's do this. I want to be as fair as I can. Let's start with that piece that we did the bend test on. Okay. And we want to do what we did to the other one, just to be fair. Let's go ahead and we'll hit right in that spot right there. All right. And I'm gonna go with a five pound weight at this time, like we did on the last one. Okay, we'll start at 12 inches. Okay, pretty good. Go 18. Still doing great. 24. Oh, look, it split the frame. Yep, split sure the did. frame right there. See down the yep, middle? Sure did. Okay, let's uh, reset it. Let's keep going. 30. Okay, just making the frame worse. Yep. 36. Actually, that one, that one did pretty good. <laughs> It's, now, I think now that it's broken, it's starting to absorb some of that impact. Uh, 42. Okay, that's a pretty good hole there. Yeah. Okay, we got to finish. We got to go to 48. We'll be All done. Right. <laughs> All right, 48. Okay, let's look at it now. 
That's what it looks like. Yeah, it took quite a hit. I can smell something too. Like I wonder if the break in that released uh, the motor the from that. Yeah, well, I don't know what's in there, but it, um, you could definitely smell it. Okay, that's the impact test. Now, it is Houston and it's hot. Can you tell? <laughs> yeah. And uh, it is hot. <laughs> it's hot. <laughs> so these products, one of the things that Pella claims is that their product will do good to uh, temperatures below 40 degrees Fahrenheit, minus 40, okay? So the question is, if we repeated the same test in cold temperatures, would there be a difference? To do that, we've been practicing something all day. We put this stuff in the freezer. Come check this out. So this is, we keep, uh, we keep ice here for the crews, right? They take ice with them every morning and um, Gatorade and stuff like that. And so this morning, what time was it, Jason, that we put these in here? Uh, probably about nine o'clock. About nine o'clock and it's already uh, 1.30. So we have another set of both, right? Here's yes, the, uh, the Impervia and here's the Fibrex. And you see a little damage on this because we had some problems uh, when we were getting it out of there, it broke on us. But do we have that temperature gun? Yes. Okay, we're gonna grab a temperature gun and uh, right before we do the test, we wanna show you the temperature of each product so that way we can, you can see that we are testing them uh, as equally as we can, right? They're gonna change temperature as soon as we pull them out of here, but where are they right now? Let's take a look right now. Oh, oh, come on, Jason, you're yeah. strong. <laughs> it's got a vacuum on it, doesn't it? Okay, all yeah. right, here we go. So right now, this is minus 7.8 degrees, 7.9 degrees, and this one is Minus 9.4, 6.3, 8.9. Okay, so they're, they're pretty much, they've both been in here the same amount of time. Yeah. Okay, so we're gonna cut the camera for just a minute for the sake of time. Let us get another piece set up. I'll grab the temperature gun again and we'll repeat the process. Okay, so we're back. Jason, go ahead and grab the um, Impervia, the small one. Yes, perfect. Bring it over here as quick as you can. Sit it down in the same spot where we had it before. And I'm gonna check the temperature on it. Right there, the point of impact shows me it's going to be nine point, it's already 10 degrees. Wow, that stuff is, is changing temperature fast, isn't it? Yeah. Okay, 9.7 degrees. So we're gonna go back to the two and a half pound weight and we're gonna start again at 12 inches to see if being a, a cold climate actually makes this stuff any more brittle. Here we go, 12 inches. Okay, now we gotta move fast, 18. Yeah, so a little crack there. 24. About the same. 30. About the same. I'm gonna go all the way to 48 because this thing's starting to warm up. Ready? Yep. Okay, let's take a look at it. Looks to me like it's about the same amount of damage as last time. Now, before we go too much further, let's keep going. Okay. And let's just jump with a five pounder all the way to the end of the test. We're gonna go 48 inches, five pounds. You ready? Yes, sir. Okay, so that's where we're at. I think that actually looks about the same as it did before. But I'll tell you what, oh my friend. <laughs> This feels so good. <laughs> okay, Jason, get over there and get ready. Grab the other one now. This is, uh, that was the Pella Impervia, and this is the Anderson Fibrex. And let's check it for temperature. Yeah, that's just a little cover strip. Put it down in there, right where it's gonna go. We'll check the point of impact again. Wow, that heated up pretty fast. It's already at 25, 23 degrees. Okay, there we go, 16, 14, 12, 11. Okay, so we got here as fast as we could. Uh, two and a half pounds, ready? ready. 12 inches. Okay, doesn't seem to make any difference there. 18. Doesn't seem to make any difference there. 
24. Still looking great. 30. Oh, I saw a piece fly yeah, off. I did. 36. Okay, I'm starting to see a dent there. Uh, 42. That's really getting messed up yeah. now. Okay, 48. Yeah. All right. Yeah, I wonder if the sticker's keeping it from falling apart. <laughs> Because <laughs> the sticker is, oh, yeah, see there? Yeah. Underneath that sticker, we'd had some damage. Okay, let's do this. Let's turn it around and let's try to hit this side of it. We'll yeah. go to the, get that sticker out of the way there. We'll try to hit here. All right. And we'll use the five pounder. Right here. Okay, and we're not gonna start at the very end because that wouldn't be fair. We'll start at 24, even though we did the other one at, uh, at the very end. You ready? Here we go, 24 inches. Okay, that did break, that broke really bad. So it did break faster cold, didn't it? Yes. Okay, yeah. turn it around the other way now. Let's give it every benefit of the doubt. We're gonna go to 48. I would say that it breaks, I would say that it breaks differently, if not sooner, under cold temperature. Now you say, Jeff, why would that matter? Well. Wouldn't matter so much in Houston, but it wouldn't matter if you lived up north somewhere where it's really cold and you had really cold temperatures and you were concerned about moisture getting on the window and then it would freeze at night, right? And then thaw in the morning and freeze and thaw. You might eventually have some issues. Now, uh, I'm sure Anderson has tested theirs. You can go to their website. They'll tell you where it's designed to perform, but Pella makes a claim that they do better in cold climate than their competitors do. And I would have to say, based on our non-scientific entertainment only uh, test, they were correct. Yep. Okay, we're gonna pause, we're gonna set up, we're gonna go back to the bend test using a cold product, see if it makes any difference at all. Okay, we're trying to hurry here. We pulled this out, strapped it on, and this time we're already fully loaded because we know we, they both can handle the weight and we're just gonna go up slowly with it to see what it does. If you notice here, this thing right now is already up to 28 degrees. I mean, I rushed it as, as fast as I could. You saw, I mean, you can see the frost on there, that thing's cold. So everybody stand up, be, stand back and be safe. Uh, Jason, I want you to just real easy, no jerking it, but just go up real slowly and let's watch, see what happens here. Keep going, keep going. Okay, stop right there, you're in the air. We're off the ground as you can see, and I'm gonna check for deflection here. I don't think the deflection's changed. I think it's still about the same as the last time. Less than a quarter inch for sure. And uh, I would say it's performing just as well in the cold. It's completely off the ground. You can see it spinning. It's the same amount of weights. And I'm really impressed. I gotta tell you, I'm impressed. Okay, we'll be right back. We're gonna set up the next one and go again. Okay, so we're back. We're doing this as quick as we can. This is now the Anderson Fibrex. And you can see that it's the same as the other, 39 degrees, 38 degrees. We're trying to keep this stuff as close as we can to being equal and the same. And we're going to take the same load. You can see it's fully loaded like it was last time. And we're gonna go up. So Jason, go up slowly with it. Nice and easy. Be real gentle. There you go, keep going. Now it's just starting to take the tension off. Okay, there it's up there now. I heard a little crack. I'm not sure what that was about, but stop right there. You're good, you're off the ground. Very good. Now we're going to take a look at the deflection. You know, I can't say the deflection is any different. It might be slightly more, but it's not really any different. Let's check the back. I say any different, any different than it was the last time. No, it's, I would say it's yeah, about, the about the same. Yeah, I'd say it's about the same. Now, um, these tests conclude, in my opinion, that when Pella makes the claim that they do a better job of absorbing impact, the dent test, than, than what their competitor, Anderson, does with Fibrex, I'm gonna have to say that I agree. The second test that we conducted, which was the test of the bend strength, and they claim that they do a better job, Pella claims, I'm gonna have to agree. So when it comes to those two tests, they're both great products. 
I love them both for different reasons, but when it comes to these claims and these tests, today I'd have to say that Pella was the winner. Thanks for watching this video. Let me know if I can help.